Hi everyone. I've put together this cushion. Now it's using Fusion Crochet. Uh, if you've never heard of it, it's um, where patchwork meets crochet. And if you can see it on the cushion here, these squares are made of fabric and then they're joined together with actual crochet in between. I'll show you how I did it if you want to have a go. You don't just have to make cushions, you can make uh, blankets, coasters, table mats, runners, just about anything. You can even make little scented bags to pop in your wardrobe, pad them out and uh, add a little bit of perfume or some herbs. Uh, the possibilities are endless and it's really good fun and uh, I've really enjoyed making this. It's taken me about a week and I shall show you where to begin and a few tips on how to do it. The first thing you need to decide is how big you want your little fabric squares. Now I'm doing a cushion cover and I want to do four pieces of fabric with um, crocheted edging joining them all together so I've gone for a piece this big, it's about five and a half inches. The reason I've gone for five and a half inches is because the edging that you put around the edge to attach your crochet to, I want to do it at a half inch spaces, so five and a half inches worked out just right. And if once you've done it, it's not quite big enough, you can easily add more crochet in around the edge, so then you can bring it up to full size. So it's entirely up to you. Um, I've just cut this little template out of card, it's serial packet card, just uh, to the exact size, five and a half inches. And then I've cut the fabric I'm using, which is this little bird pattern. And I've just cut it to about an inch larger all the way round than my template. Now how you sew your template is entirely up to you. Um, I don't particularly like sewing with a sewing machine and not everybody owns a sewing machine either. So if you want to do it that way that's fine, you would simply do a hem to the, so that you get your final square the right size. So you do a hem about an inch in and machine sew that. Or you can put two pieces together, you could put two pieces wrong side together, sew them leaving a small gap and then turn them right side out and iron them to the, to flat and that's a bit I always find quite difficult, they never seem to come out the right size but as, a, as I say it's personal preference, whatever suits you. Um, if you're going to do something like a blanket, a quilt etc where you need it to be double sided then you will need to do two pieces so that you've got the same fabric um, I will show you how to do that my way, but if you wanted to do it on the sewing machine, as I say, if you put the two pieces like that, sewed it, and then turned it right way round, you would have the two sides. So I'll show you how my way is. It involves using uh, an iron and some of the um, iron-on tape, the webbing tape that you can buy, which simply irons into seams and it saves you having to do a lot of sewing but like I've said before it's all personal preference so I shall show you how I do that that will be the next step so I've got my square of fabric with the template on the top and I'm just going to make some crease lines by folding it over and just ironing onto that to make a crease just so that we know what uh, where we're working. Just open that out and do this side. Do that on all the edges. And then bring each corner over and just press those as well and this will just help it to fold into like a mitered corner once you start adding the, uh, the 
hem intake. Now if you can see there, there's like a fold line from that original crease that we did when we folded it over. If you get those to follow each side, that'll get the corner almost spot on. You can take your time with this, I'm just trying to rush through it so that you get the idea of what happens. So you take your card out and then you can see like you've got these lines where the, uh, the iron's creased it and then it's just a matter of take a little bit of the iron on webbing tape and pop it under the corner and we're just going to seal those down. Just follow the instructions for the webbing tape, but it's usually just a good press with a warm iron. We'll do that on all four corners. Let it follow its natural natural fold from the creases that you did earlier. Then pop some more a stripper tape. It doesn't have to fit the whole piece. This is just really to hold it while you do the sewing. And if you don't have webbing tape, you could just tack all this into position if you prefer. And again, just following the creases that you made earlier get that pressed down when you come to do the corner now just make sure that it comes to a, a nice point up there if you can and if the corners aren't perfect it doesn't matter I mean at the end of the day it is all handmade and uh, I don't think anybody's going to notice except you if there's a tiny fraction out. It's not perfection, it's all... People are distracted by the prettiness of your work rather than looking for little faults. But if you can get it tight, that's fine. It'll make it a bit easier when you come to sew round the corner as well. And as I said earlier, if you prefer to sew, then by all means, do it on your sewing machine. It's all a matter of personal preference. And do the last one there. Just bring those corners in. Turn it over and give it one last quick press and there you can see you've got a piece of fabric the size of the template that we started with. If I just hold that up you can see how these corners are mitered together. As I say they're not held fully but that doesn't matter because you're going to now be sewing over the top of those with the, um, we're going to do a blanket stitch around the edge and if you don't know how to blanket stitch I'll show you that as well. There we go, you need to make as many of those as you um, need. I need um, eight for my cushion, I'm going to do four each side. So I'll make those and then I shall come back and show you how to carry on. So what we're going to do next is add a blanket stitch edging to your little piece of material. Now I've chosen to do it about half an inch long, half an inch between spaces, but that would depend on how big your fabric is because if it was a small piece you would want obviously a smaller edge. But just try and make it as 
evenly spaced as you possibly can and obviously you need to make an even number between the corners so that you get them evenly but uh, we're going to use that then as the edging to attach your crochet like this you crochet into the, the stitches that you've made and there's various ways to do that so we'll discuss that when we come to doing that but for now I'll just show you how to do some blanket stitch if you know how to blanket stitch you can fast forward over this bit I've just marked out the uh, spacing you can use um, different things pencil pen depends on the fabric you're using really and how you think it might show if you think it'll show then use something that will um, wipe off like Taylor's chalk you can now buy that in pencil form as well so you could just mark it and I've gone on each of my markers and just put the needle through just to define the hole a bit just to make it that little bit easier so I'll show you how to do part way round I won't do the whole thing because it takes a long time but give you the idea I would suggest you start in the middle of one of the sides don't start at a corner because they're a little bit tricky and uh, it's not so easy to start off the yarn and also if you can do it with one full length of yarn for the whole thing again it saves you having to tie off the yarn and join in a new piece but you can if you need to do but I prefer to do it in one piece if I can and it's simply a matter of doing three times the length on each side for this so I just did one two three and I've multiplied that by the number of sides to to get a length of yarn so it's entirely again it's personal preference so now it's a matter of just tying a knot and putting this on the back of your work come in from the back I'll start here just come in from the back through that stitch that you've made there pull your yarn through, as I say you do have quite a bit of yarn but it's worth it pull it through and take it around the back and come back in exactly the same spot if you can see that there Right. bring in the camera and then just pull that tight but not too tight that it bunches up the fabric but just tight enough to pull it round and then just take your needle back under that stitch so that you're on the other side of that loop and that leaves you then you're going to be working towards yourself I'm afraid I can't give instructions for left-handed, I'm sorry, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to work it out. So we're now going to go from the front of each of the stitches. I'm going to go into the marker that I made there and out at the back and keeping your yarn underneath the needle, I'm going to pull that through. Just keep pulling it and you'll see that it forms that little little bridge over there onto the edge and again don't pull it too tight but tight enough just to keep the stitch flat across the top and then in again into the next stitch and just pull it till it comes tight and the next one and once you get going you get into quite a, a rhythm of doing it Now to do the corner, we just do it as normal into there. A bit of extra thickness there, so it can be a bit tricky to get through. Just pull it till it's tight, and then go back into the very same stitch and come up up the corner there. Keep your yarn coming up at an angle there. And 
and just help it to come into that corner there like so you can see you've now got two little stitches and then we're going to do the next stitch again into the same spot so we've got three stitches in there now and the same again but this time we're going to pull it at right angles and again just ease that stitch onto the corner pull it gently you can see there how that forms like a little bird's foot in the corner then it's a matter then of just carrying on again down this edge keeping your yarn underneath there as you pull it through it tight and then you carry on and work all the way down this edge until you come back round right round the whole thing. When you've uh, finished your blanket stitch and you come back round to where you started the easiest way to fasten off is just to go under that first stitch and then that completes the round and then on the other side just go through the stitch at the back and before you pull it tight go back through the loop and that will just knot it off and that should hold it there now rather than cut the yarn if you've got a long enough length just there I would use that to connect your ball ready to begin crocheting it'll just save you having to sew it on at the back or sew in a thread but uh, that's entirely up to you you can just start normal crochet if you wish so I shall join that with a magic knot. So I've attached the yarn with a, just a magic knot there and I'm going to begin working into these top loops here across the top of that blanket stitch. Now you can do any stitch you like. I'm going to do three chain and anchor it into each one with a double crochet. So three chain, one double crochet. And that I find that gives this nice sort of open work effect if you can see that but it's up to you because you could work double crochet across there and just say do three three or four in each one and that would give a really tight edge to it so it's entirely up to you and it depends what sort of stitch you want to do and what effect you want and also if you wanted to do a double sided project like a blanket or a quilt or something and you don't want that raw edge, I mean that's okay for a um, cushion cover like I'm doing because that will be hidden inside but if you want something that uh, is double sided all you need to do is put two together make the two and then you would simply work through the stitches of both of them so you'd go through both stitches and commence your work like that and it will join them then and you just work around them all and they would be joined together but I'm just going to work on the one because that's fine for me because it's all going to be hidden inside so I shall start going to that first stitch and do one chain which will be equivalent to the double crochet that I'll do in all these and then I shall do three chain and then one double crochet and then three chain and one double crochet and I'll do that all the way right around the edge even up to this corner when you get to the corner it's just a matter of working in each of them as well so we'll work into that one there on that side and then into that one there on that side and that'll bring it around the corner and uh, when you get back round again then we'll continue with the rest of it. So when you've worked all the way round doing those three chain 
one double crochet through your chain into all your blanket stitches. It's simply a matter of just finishing the last bit with three chain and then doing a slip stitch back into that first chain that you did at the start. And then you get something like this. It does look a little bit crumpled at first but we'll soon sort that out with the next rows. And as you can see on the corners there you get a loop across the corner where we will work a corner stitch on the next rounds. We're going to do trebles into the next round so we end up with something that looks like this. We're going to do three treble with no chain in between on the uh, on the main row but at the corners we will put one chain just to take it round there. So it's simply a matter of just doing just do a slip stitch to bring you into that next three chain space so that you're starting in the middle of it and then do three chain as your first treble and then two treble into there so that's the equivalent of three treble into that three chain space and then into the next one simply do three treble And then we'll just continue around like that in every one of those three chain spaces. So there's three and three in the next one. When we get to that corner stitch, which is either side of the point, if you can see that, we do three treble. And then one chain and then three treble back in that same space and that would help you turn the corner and give it a nice sharp corner and then it's just a matter of continuing down the side doing three treble in each of the, the three chain spaces until you get to the next corner where you do three chain uh, sorry three treble one chain three treble in the corner and so on round each of the four corners and when you come back round to where you started there with that three chain, it's just a matter of slip stitch into the top of that uh, three chain that you did that's counted as the first treble. Then do three chain again and that will be the last treble in that um, group of, of the next round when you come back round. So we'll do three treble into this next space. And then do three treble in each of these spaces that you made on the previous round there. And like I say, when you do come back round, you'll just do two treble in there. And then that will count as the last one. And you'll just slip stitch into it just there. And at the corners, like on the previous round, you'll do three treble, one chain and three treble into that one chain space that you did on the corner there. And that will bring you around the corner. You'll end up with something that looks like this. Now don't worry if it looks a bit curled up because once you sew the pieces together and just ease it into shape and pull up your corners like that it soon starts to take out those little bends and it will become nice and flat. So once you've made all your squares, as I say I'm making eight because I'm doing a cushion cover We'll then join them together and then make them into the cushion cover. There we are. I've now got all my pieces made. I've got eight of them ready to make my cushion cover. And I've begun to join four of them together for each side. Um, it's important you make sure your fabric is face all facing the right way before you start. Um, it's worth mentioning because it's easy done when you're not concentrating and it'd be a shame to join it all together then find your pieces are the wrong way around. Um, I've decided to join it with a flat chain stitch which I have done a video on how to do it. Um, I didn't think it was a great video, it's really really hard to get in and show 
a close up how to do it. So I'm just going to do a little bit on this one because I thought with using the white, I decided to use white to join just to add a little bit of contrast. So I thought that might show it up a little bit better. So if you'd like to know how to do that, I shall try and show you. If you don't want to do the flat chain stitch, you can just sew them together. You can sew them with a needle, you can crochet them together. It's entirely up to you, your favorite method of joining. So I've attached the yarn just at the back there into one of the stitches hidden away. And I've run the, the uh, contrast yarn up the back there. And what we're going to do is work into just the top stitch on this side, starting with that one chain space on the corner and working into the bottom one of it on that side so that when you put them together, they're the two stitches that are just opposite each other. So I shall go into this one and then into the same one on the other side, pick up the yarn at the back and pull it through both stitches and that gives you one loop like you would with normal crochet. And then I'm going to go down into the next stitch, which is this one here, and then the corresponding one on the other side, pick up the yarn, pull through both and then pull through that one that's already on your hook. And then same with the next one, in there, in the other side, pick up the yarn and pull it through, and through the one on the hook. Keep going up the row like that, always making sure you get the corresponding one so that they match in. And soon it starts to come together. When you get going you get quite a a rhythm but it's a little bit hard to show it to the camera without getting my hands in the way but hopefully you get the idea. I find it easier to do it on a flat surface than in your hands and holding the two big pieces of fabric. And as you can see it joins them together in this nice chain and you, you've got the other side of the stitch here and the other side of the stitch there and it makes like a little border either side of the chains. If I can zoom in on it for you. Wrong way. There we go. So I shall carry on doing that. I shall join both my pieces together. I'm going to join across here and across there that I've already done and then I shall join both sides together with some edging work across here leaving a gap to put the cushion infill in and then closing that gap at the end but I shall do that and come back and show you the rest. All the pieces are finished now and I've joined them together with this white um, contrast colour and I've also begun to join them together around the edge, working through both pieces. I've simply put them together, wrong sides together, and um, lined up the corners and these holes between the trebles. And uh, in between them I've done one double crochet, three treble, and then one double crochet. And that's created this light little scalloped edge along there. Next. When you come to the middle here, you can see that corner still where you came up there, just there between those um, trebles and again on that side just there. So that's where you'll do the next few stitches to come across that join. So in there through both layers, one double crochet, three treble. and then one double crochet. You can do any edging you want, it doesn't have to be this one. If you want to do uh, some other design that's fine, it's entirely up to you. Again we're going through both layers just over that side, one double crochet, three 
free treble. And then one double crochet. And that brings you across there, putting that edge in all the way around. Now you do that uh, on all three sides, leaving a gap here so that you can then put your um, pillow cushion stuffing in. Um, so I'll do that uh, and then it's just a matter of continuing with, it, with your cushion inside. I mean you could do it now with it inside but it's a bit bulky to work with so it's probably better to just do uh, leaving a gap and then pop it in and then finish it off. I think I might also just run a double crochet edging in white when I finish this across there just to finish it off and, and add a little bit more contrast to it. And there we have the finished cushion. I went round the edge, like I said, just adding a little bit of white and all I did was, if I can get that to, without too much light on it, I added three double crochets on the top of the trebles and then one slip stitch down into the gap and that just put this little white edge across the top there. I'm really pleased with that and it's exactly the same on the other side. So I hope you have a go if you do. I'd love to see uh, what you manage to create or if you make anything else. Like I said um, earlier you could do little table mats, you could do coasters, anything really. Little uh, scented bags to hang in your wardrobe. So whatever you do I hope you have fun. Bye for now.